Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Destiny Machine of a Podcast, Episode 3. My name is Raven from the Zeon Remnants channel. I write the Machinima Team Titan, and here with me today I have three other Destiny Machinima creators. Uh, we have some announcements to make, and you guys have sent us some awesome questions, so we're going to answer those here in a little bit. First, I want to introduce everybody. Uh, here to my left, I have... Hi, everyone, I'm Digital Curse. I'm the creator for Fire Team Weasel. And... I'm Tempest Knight. I'm the creator of Rift and From the Ashes. And the new guy? Hi, I'm Moral Support. I am the head writer for From the Ashes. Sweet. Um, so, uh, off the three of us, uh, me, Digital, and Tempest, we've been kind of working together for the last couple months on some things. Um, and now we have Moral, Moral here. Um, he writes From the Ashes, which is also featured on Tempest Knight's channel. And uh, we wanted to announce something pretty cool. Um, on the screen right now, you guys are going to see all these comments you guys have left over different videos. Here we go. Uh, so these comments here are left from you guys. Um, you guys have been speculating and asking about these crossovers that we've been doing and if they're going to lead to anything. Well, the answer is yes. They have been leading to something, and we are proud to pronounce... All these creators that are in this podcast right now are part of it. So right now we have four shows. We are all sharing the same timeline, and we will be doing more work together in the future. Um, and very soon, we'll start branding all the episodes at the start of every episode of Team Titan, Fire Team Weasel. Uh, Rift is done now, um, but from the ashes, um, you will see a, a new intro for all the shows that are in this universe that we're sharing currently. Um, what do you guys want to tell the people that watch your show about what we're going to start doing here? Well, we've started doing it, but now we're officially announcing it to everybody. I just want to say that I'm excited. It's been a long time coming. And, um, you know, all the references that we've been having in each other's show has just been kind of like small at first. And so now we're just going to make a huge crossover event. It's going to be the most anticipated thing that I want people to watch out for. Now, you're talking about that special that we're planning? Oh, yeah, that too, that special that we're okay. planning. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll probably talk about that later, but yeah, we've been slowly kind of teasing things here and there. Um, we do have a big, like, we'll call it a special that we want to do, um, probably an hour, maybe 90 minutes long, with a lot of characters from both shows, well, four shows. Um, so what, we'll, we'll build to that. We'll talk about it more when the time comes. Uh, Dig, what did you want to input regarding this uh, this idea that we've been working on? Yeah, it's like um, like when we all like started this. I didn't think we never like got together like the, the kind of this. We kind of thought we'd do our own thing just because we just like making it. Yeah. But then obviously it just kind of got built up. We actually made our own like little community, and um, we'll leave the, the uh, link to the description down below. But there's a uh, Discord now that we pretty much opened up for everyone to join, for just pretty much the Destiny Machinima community. So um. I'll be making a video like after episode six was released about this new Discord, a new way to get involved with like um, the Destiny Machine. Basically, get to talk to us, talk to everyone, wherever you're on Xbox or PlayStation Four or even PC now. We need more PS4 right. people. I need help. Yeah. No, <laughs> I have help, but I need more help. It'd be nice to get uh, someone otherwise on PC. You know, <laughs> nice to see that, but you never yeah. know. But I think when it gets eventually there. But right now, you know. Um, We've been working so hard, and it's kind of really similar how we're doing for Marvel, you know, of our, how they do the crossovers. So eventually it's going to all lead up to, like, this one big climax um, that, uh, you know, in this special, like, 90-minute film kind of thing. And we even we don't know what's going to be like. Just go, go with the flow. But uh, we, I'm excited. We'll, I think be, everyone excited. we'll be building to it. And um, I think... I don't think there's really ever been something like that before, as far as like Machinima goes, where like different shows in the same video game or whatever kind of got together, and then now they're like, like I started doing Team Titan. We talked about I started doing Team Titan because of Fire Team Weasel. Um, so then me and him, we would just trade comments for a while, and then we started talking, and then we started doing the podcast, and then we started like, hey, can we get 
I think the first time it happened was like you asked for me and Brun to be in season two episode. And I was like, oh, we should do more of this. And then that's when we kind of decided to. We realized that our storylines were in different parts of the wor- a timeline, and that if we planned it out right, we could make them work together, which was pretty cool. And that's we've been building this timeline now, this document that we have to make that work. Um, Mauro, what about you? I know you're you're new. This is the first time you've been on this, but uh, what do you think about this? Uh, it seems really cool, and can't wait for it to get going. I know it'll be a while, but... Like, writing with Shinemas, I've been wanting to do that for a long time, since, like, the Reach days, so... The Reach days, I remember them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, so... Good to be finally part of it. What, yeah. um... So, we have a lot of, uh... Questions from fans, um, from the Discord, but I actually had a question I just thought of. Um... Mm. We talked about this earlier, but let's talk about it real quick. I think some something might, people might want to here uh what character combinations would you like to see together like between us right now like characters from each show who would you who would you be really interested to see together uh, i'll take the first one I, well i think you should Tim, because i know exactly what you're gonna say <laughs> well, i'll save mine i'll save mine since y'all already know oh. it. they don't know it though yeah. let's have a uh, digital um, go first um like i really want like Erevan and the uh, majority of the warlocks I'll say to meet up. So like Blue, Jacob, Erevan. Um I don't think there's any warlocks in Team Titan so far. So. There will be. Uh there will be. There actually in this next episode there are two. One minor character and one very, very important character that get introduced that are warlocks. Cool. So maybe like he can be in like the um in the future probably, but I don't know. I don't even know either. But uh, yeah. <laughs> it'd be cool like see like maybe some of the Titans like meet up and I make maybe the hunters and uh, maybe like I was thinking like Raven and Erica because they have like a symbol like pass receiver. And um That'd be cool. Maybe someone like someone that uh, usually don't really match, so someone like Autumn and maybe Brun or something, I don't know, but... <laughs> I'm just oh my god, god. My head. Autumn and Brun would be pretty funny, actually, because Brun's such a yeah. dipshit half the time. Like, Autumn would just be, like, yeah. like blue talking and, crap um, to him. Dipshit, so... <laughs> That'd be perfect. <laughs> and then someone like, um... Slaker and Ray. Uh, I'll say Butch and, um... Scully. Buck and Scully. <laughs> yeah, Buck and Scully would be yeah. awesome, too. That'd be great as well. Give me my snacks! <laughs> <laughs> he can't have your snacks. They're all mine. <laughs> I always forget that you voice Scully. It's so funny. Right now. I know because I voice like loads of characters, and I just sound like different on all. So <laughs> it's really weird. I know. People don't recognize I'm Storm as well. You know, I put on a deep voice, and it's just like, oh yeah, I'm him. It's like really. And th- this next episode, <laughs> I voiced a new character too, and like a lot of people didn't know it was me. So it'd be pretty fun. I, I get to yell. <laughs> yeah. What about Mar- uh, uh, Moral? I don't know. <laughs> I love like, your contribution. I, wanna, I definitely want to see like Gemini and Scully together, just for the goofiness or whatever would happen. Yeah, um, like um, she's like are some funny fun character. And, um, yeah, just like a weird fun thing. Because <laughs> then you got was, spoiler hmm. alert, Darcy in there. Oh yeah, um, um, they'll eventually find out about the Darcy gun, which is um. <laughs> it's something to... more similar to Borderlands with um way you're approaching it and uh, Destiny, but it's so great. I love that bit in Borderlands, and it's gonna be great in Destiny. Mm-hmm. I, I, I haven't thinking... watched from the ashes at all, so I need to really catch up. I need to catch yeah, up on Rift you too. Need to get on there, bro. Yeah, to... I know. it's a fresh um, so busy pressure because it's not like based off any characters as in Destiny. So there's no screw ups like Osiris mm-hmm. or anything else. So it's yeah. all original. yeah, it's gonna be all original, which is great. It allows lots of room and stuff. I know already. Uh, I would say Dion and maybe someone that else is smart. I wouldn't say like Blue, but probably someone like um, Dion and Falcon or something. Falcon. Maybe Jacob. Jacob's pretty smart, and you know, smart. we already had a thing with that. Jacob, I would Falcon, say yeah. Falcon and. Um... Is there any other tryhards besides Falcon in the mission of? <laughs> Falcon is clearly a tryhard. He wears a full Osiris gear, and he's like always, you know, he his maybe Falcon and Joey. Falcon and Joey. Falcon and Joey. That'd be funny. I like that. They both tryouts. 
I guess we should just have way. Sergeant come in from Guardian Boot Camp and just school. It's like other characters. <laughs> but yeah, it's gonna be really cool to see all these different characters like interact with each other. I'm really excited for that. Um, I'm I want to see Raven and Sierra. I want to. I don't know why, but I, I want to see hey, that. Hey, have it make it all female. Have Raven, Sierra, and Erica right there. Yeah. All female slash robots. They have a thing. It's it's there a fetish we have apparently. <laughs> Well, my most look forward to uh, thing is uh, Digital was talking about he voices a lot of characters, so I want to have all of the characters he voiced go on their own little spirit journey or something. <laughs> it's just going to be him in a room for like 30 minutes just talking by to him himself. Like, it's going to be no. hilarious. Basically, I voice um, <laughs> Storm, Scully, and um, Team Titan, I also voice, um, I believe, is you voice Boss's Ghost. Boss's ghost. I voiced Gareth's ghost in uh, From the Ashes, and I voiced Delphian, which is the dead orbit guy in Rift. So that's pretty much like five to six characters. Yeah, and uh, in Team Titan, I voice I voice Raven, Buck, Kenji, which is Brun's ghost, and now in episode seven, I'll be voicing the sergeant of Guardian Boot Camp. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah, like- Huh? All y'all just, just have a whole, just have at it. Just talk to each other. Talk, oh to, God, yeah. talk to yourself. Well, the, in episode six, there was a scene with Buck and Raven, so I was talking to myself. <laughs> I was like, you don't know what the Buck is cooking? You're going to die now. I don't know. And I was kind of going back and forth. I was like, oh my God, I'm talking. <laughs> that was such a hard scene for me because I'm like, cause since I'm talking by myself, I'm like, is this funny? I kept, I changed it so many times because it was hard for me to tell. Yeah. But, but we'll I, have time I, with the writer's room or whatever. So, well, we do have questions from the Discord. Um, some of this stuff we've answered in other podcasts. So if it's stuff we've answered, we just kind of skim over it, you know, just summarize the answer. But uh, one person asked, how much footage do you usually shoot per episode? How much of said footage is used? Uh, I think that's probably going to be different for everyone. Um, I'll answer it real quick. Um, I shoot as much footage as I think I need. And then once I edit... I'll see what works and what doesn't. I have to go back and shoot more. So it could vary widely. Like episode 7 when we shot it, about 90% of the footage was used, which was awesome. Um, But in some episodes, sometimes it's like 70%. Like you start editing it and you're like, this doesn't work. I have to redo this or whatever the case is. Maybe someone didn't do something they're supposed to do in the scene and then you notice it after so it really just kind of depends uh do you guys have similar experiences or well when i uh edit all the vid all the footage like my last episode nine ten there were like three four hours of footage right you have to edit each everything because i record in 10 minute increments because i'm poor and I don't do the whole I don't do the whole capture card, so I use the Xbox, whatever, D V R whatever. Yeah. And um it's about it it's it's about three hours or so. Then what I find is that I don't have enough footage sometimes, so I have to go back and I have to re record. Yeah. Or something happens with the footage and and I have to re record it anyway. So it's a lot of a lot of extra footage. So there's a lot that I leave on a cutting room floor basically. And like that just I have it saved in an online file for everything I've done ever since the first from the ashes. And it's about 43 something gigabytes. Wow. So that's a lot of footage. It's just there. Hmm. For, for me is, um, usually I kind of like film pretty much on the day and it usually takes about at least an hour to two hours every time, depending on how big the, you know, the film, uh, the scene's going to be. And then when I'm actually like, um, going through the footage it's like there's so much like recorded that's not even used so i say i use like at least 15 to 20 minutes of actual footage i need and then like the rest of it's like just garbage i just chuck in the recycle bin uh but it's, it's most of the time when you're trying to film people just like you know i have a leave go eat food or just yeah. like mess about and just like okay I gotta I, use I, my come emotes. On. I got emotes. Find emotes. emotes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I like I try as much as possible. I'll, on on the day while I'm recording, I I throw away a lot of footage, but that's before I ever get over to my computer. Like I try to make sure that in my capture gallery on PS4 that I have the shots that I want and they look right. So I guess if you take that into consideration, there's probably a lot of footage that gets chucked away. Um, I answered it more like in editing, but I yeah. 
And now that I think about it, there's probably a lot of footage that gets chucked away before I even get it to like the editing software. So yeah, that footage that you chuck away, I still have on my editing floor. So I don't, I don't I, trim it. I get the thing. I, I should it. start that. I should start doing that. Yeah. And the moral, moral does he just writes the scripts, right? So he doesn't. Uh... Yeah, I'm a behind the scenes guy. Okay, so, so just just smile and yeah. look halfway decent. Um, <laughs> All right, so we uh, another question that we got that we answered before. They said, "What's your favorite part of the machinima making process?" Um, so, how about Moro answer this since he couldn't answer last question? Well, I really like coming up with the characters and like the writing and brainstorming process of creating scripts and such, and like filling out plot and story. You can respect that. Um, yeah, mine is the editing process even though it takes a while i just like yeah. to see everything come together you know i get to meet the 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 voice lines and i go over the characters and it's like oh this looks so good like whoever whenever i have a body actor and they like do the correct type of either head nod or you know sigh or something it just seems so good and then once i put it all together that's one of my favorite parts also the uploading but i think i already answered that so yeah we answered it's my before. favorite it's my second favorite part the editing what about you, yeah. Dig? Yes, same with you. I say the after all the grueling process of editing it and filming and then get it all together. And then as soon as you upload it and see all the views coming in, that's like the best part. Because you know you're satisfied like your audience yeah. right there. Yeah, I feel the same. My favorite part is uh, probably my favorite part is before even getting it out on YouTube. I send all the team members a rough cut of it, like what I've sent you guys before. And then they give me feedback. And then I'm like, okay, this is this is hopefully going to make people laugh, so let's finish this and get it up, and then I get it up, and then, uh, like, I think what did, my thing is, like, the end result is worth it in the end, to see every, everyone be happy about it, you know? Mm. So. Uh, let's see. Okay, here's a good question. Uh, what is the most difficult slash intense filming session you've ever had, and why? I have the answer mm -hmm. to that question for me. Is it limited to risk? Never forget. All right, is it limited to Destiny? Uh, I mean, we can, if you uh, have something I'll else. I'll say ever. You, I, think I know you did a Halo one, so if you want to talk about Halo real quick. <laughs> I'm opening up some old wounds here, but there was a scene in one of my trailers that I used to have where it was all seven of my main Spartan characters, and all they had to do was stand there. I would not believe how long it took to get that <laughs> shot. I spent three hours. One guy was oh, all like, oh, God. what's going on here? Oh, I can't turn. I'm like, how hard <laughs> is it to stand still and look at a thing? But, you know, I digress. Uh, in Rift, or Destiny Machinimus, I think my hardest part was um, in Episode 7 of From the Ashes. I had to get multiple people in the same instance on EDZ. That was a hard day because we had to either ask, beg people to invite one of us or try and zone in. And then once we finally did that, I had accidentally left, and so we had to do it again. Good job. It was, a, and yeah, yeah, it was a dumb moment, but you know, it's fun, and in the end, it, it's worth it. But it took a lot of, a lot of work. Yeah, I think for me, uh, there's two possible um, scenes I can think of. Um, the first one is with um, in season two, episode two of Fire Team Weasel with uh, Bannerfall, because that had a lot of people. Yeah. With working together, that was like at least twelve people on the on the set, and trying to cope with all that, and they want to mess about and stuff, is quite compelling. <laughs> um, they have to have different <laughs> costumes. It was like different extras. It was literally like <laughs> filming a proper scene with extras. Yeah, but it was a game. It was cool. Um, it worked out really well, though. It took like a week to film all that. <laughs> it was like one per yeah, day. People like one per day per scene. It all, it all took like in one area, and it took like a week. Uh, the I say the most intense one I ever did was filming for the last episode of season one with the siege engine. That took forever and so many wipes and so many times we had to do them right. It was hard enough to get there, yeah. but then actually um, just keep doing it over and over again. And there was one part we actually had to complete the ra uh, the section in the raid to get that one shot of the <laughs> siege engine falling down. Yeah, if I fucked that up. You know, you have to do it again. Game over. Yeah. You know, still the whole raid again, but thank God we did it. So that was just the, the grueling three hours. It only took three hours, thank God, but it was <laughs> the most grueling three hours I ever did, at least in filming. 
one of my hardest scenes in the beginning of Team Titan was in episode two where Bronn is running away from the Shank boss and oh. Falcon is talking okay. shit. And the reason why that was difficult was one, had to get the boss to keep following Brun, and two, during that phase, turret shanks come out every minute. So Falcon's yeah. trying to do lines, and he's like, hey, yeah, look at him, blah, blah, oh, and he gets, like, shot in the neck. <laughs> so, like, they to, like, do a line, like, from an angle, do it, do it, do it, and then, like, kill the shanks, and then do it again, and then, like, and then also at the end, we had to get it where Falcon shoots the sleeper simulant and kills the boss in front of the camera. So that took about three tries because, like, sometimes the last hit wouldn't kill him or he would go off screen and die somewhere else. So finally we got it. I think that came off really well. Um, I kind of want to redo part of it when I redo season one, but um, that was hard. And then the other hardest part was episode six and doing all the, uh, doing the fighting and uh, just because I had limited body actors for episode six, doing the ending scene with Autumn, we had to be very creative in how we did it. Um, because I didn't actually have enough people to film everyone at once. So what Brun had to do was he was playing Slaker, and he was also playing Buck. And when the camera would shift one way, we would have him jump to the other side and change armor, and then be <laughs> that character. And then when the thing went the other way, he would run over and like do it, you know, be Slaker or whatever. So like that was just like really creative editing and like video videography, because like I didn't actually have four people at the same time. I had three. And I had to do it in a certain way so it worked. And that's why we did yeah. stuff in first person during that conversation with like Autumn in first person and stuff like that. But someone asked, what editing software do you use? I use Magics. Yeah, I use them um, Adobe Premiere. I think we answered this question last Yeah, time, we did. Yeah. That's why I'm just kinda Uh Windows. Whatever. <laughs> it comes on there. Windows. Here's my editing software. <laughs> 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 Good paper and bus. pen. I was back to type. I don't even. I don't even I type. Like I don't even type the scripts. Before I use paper and pen, I use a stone and a chisel, and that took too long. So now I went to paper and a pen. <laughs> uh, okay. Someone asks, "Are there any parts of the machine making process you do not like?" I'll say the um, sound design when I'm doing like voices and stuff. I'd say I just it's so boring just to go through the voice audio oh, yeah. of so, listen to the outtakes. You know it's just like that is, that is the worst part to me. That, um, and because that I do the like ghost effects audio. and um, it's really annoying to put all the like the sounds together. Oh, yeah. If the ghost like has like a hundred lines, that's a pain. Oh yeah, to, to put all the uh the bips and the bloop boop beep bop boops. Yes. Yeah. Like, wish, so. I wish Bungie would like release that sound bite somehow, like so we can have it. Not to take. I have like eight of them, like that is yeah, recorded like, in game. Yeah, but that's um, right. Uh, at least now in D two, we can knock off the um, sound and music to just have the dialogue, so you can just record from there. Mm-hmm. What are you doing the mission? Uh, favorite or least favorite part? Mm. Besides, like going through all of the sounds because each voice actor sends me like a different format for some reason uh some people will have it bit by bit like one and then some people will have it all in one take but multiple takes and other people will just have it in an entirely different format where i have to reconvert it (laughs) but you know that's like one of my least favorite parts um i enjoy body acting i like the writing process i like the editing but that's that's my least favorite sound design my least favorite thing is boring my least favorite thing is trying to get people to actually do the body acting. That was the yeah. problem we had with episode six, uh, p- commitment, basically. Um, if I didn't have to rely on other people to make Team Titan, I would do it all myself, but I, I can't do that. Like, I physically need people to be on at the same time. So that's the most frustrating thing to me. Other stuff is, like, I have a really good idea, and this is, like, goes down to a question someone else asked. Uh, they asked, what are the, uh, what do you, or, uh, bleh. Do you think that you're limited making Destiny machinimas due to the problems that Destiny has? Um, so one of my things, and it's not really a problem Destiny has, a, for, per se, because um, hmm. like, I'll have a really good idea and I think I can do it, and again, Destiny be like, oh, I can't do it. Damn, that sucks. Um, but I, I don't have too many problems with the machinima making process. Um, no, are I there any that. limits that Destiny has that you guys dislike? That it needs it more space have... and fire team. 
More yeah, space and fire team. Fire team. Yeah, and, and to go to go what? Do. To go on patrol? Yeah, pretty much. That would be a private four would be a huge help. Yeah. Especially like for escalation protocol, it'd be great to have like a six man fire team go in. Even it though we be better stuff about escalation protocol with the small fire teams. Yeah. So I saw maybe that. they'll do something. They're monit they're monitoring it, so we'll see. I need yeah, the escalation even, uh, protocol gear, or else I can't make Raven in D two. It's like the closest to her gear that there is. You get the uh, you get the class item first, then the boots, then the chest, then the arm, and then the head in order. So yeah. you gotta work your way up. But I pretty much what I do know if you get to 385, you can just do it with three people if you coordinate it. But yeah. obviously, it's more fun to do it with more people yeah. at the time. But it's definitely okay. level Not many up people are 385. I'm only 365 right now. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, I did it with um, nine people when I was 360, and that was quite difficult anyway. But um, that's still... Um, that was fun. This stuff is fun, yeah, because you can just have, like, void and tractor cannons and void walkers. That's the way to cannon. go. Just tractor cannon, void... Change your raid rocket launcher to void. Yeah. Also, <laughs> Whatever. Another uh, thing I limit to is like I really wish like some of the emotes were like more like compatible with like how the scene goes. I'm just sick of just seeing dancers all the time. It's like just get more emotes like just based off how you feel. Like oh, I got you. More angry one, angrier ones. Like talking about in D two or D one because D one has quite a bit. In both, really, because um, in D two is more focused on dancing and yeah. just doing like the dances in D two are weird. They're really <laughs> exaggerated. Like someone with no ligaments did them. Oh, they, they, I don't know. I don't like them either. They, fake, they look at those really <laughs> horrible dances you see in like Fortnite as well. It's, yeah, ugh. going for trends basically. But I you know I like to see more emotes based off like um, you know actual emotions. Yeah, the star angry or pissed off something at you. there's only the only thing i find very limiting about destiny one compared to d2 now is that d2 has an emote wheel if d1 had an emote wheel that would be amazing because oftentimes we're doing a scene and i'm like oh we could use two emotes for one character for this and then like we have to like pick our spots if we're doing it in one long take then like okay do your emote okay go into your menu screen switch real quick before your next line you know or whatever yeah. so having an emote wheel in d1 would be awesome yeah. um like for us um like, we have to have the emotes on point before filming. I was like, oh, do you have this emote? Oh, no, i go go back to the tower, pick it up, and come back. Yeah. Oh, I don't even have it because Eververse is, uh, you know, quite limited with our RNG, so I haven't got it yet from the treasure. So, but now with the emote wheel, you can just, like, oh, can you uh, put on this, please? And he's like, oh, okay, let me just yeah. go to the emote wheel. Done. Well, really helpful. I do have uh, something to add to that. Sure. Is I would love to be able to spectate in Crucible, like custom games, like a free cam. Oh yeah, that'd be it's awesome. So helpful. It would be great. Yeah, like yeah, like all the Wasn't stuff that in Halo in the trailer. Yeah, it is a Halo, yeah, it's in Halo, right? Yeah, yeah. All the stuff that they make in the trailer, like you know, cool sword throws and knife throws, and they all doing this crazy crap. But you can't actually record that in game. Maybe. Yeah. Exactly. I got a call. Oh. Fucking assholes. <laughs> oh. I don't want what you're selling. I don't want what you're selling. I do my sergeant voice sometimes when I answer. You're selling better RNG. <laughs> um, so we got another question here. Um, how difficult do you find to write the script for your project? Moro, you're going to answer this because you most of these questions aren't for you, sadly. <laughs> yeah, sadly. <laughs> this one's for you. Go ahead. Uh, what do you find difficult about script writing? Well, yep. co-writing it's kind of odd because they have different ideas and stuff. So that's odd, but mm. yeah. So like, <laughs> is there like any time where you disagree on something and like you're like, no, you feel really strongly like, no, this should be in it because of this, and then Tempest is an asshole and he's like, no, because I'm the <laughs> boss and you you scrap that now. We haven't had that. The so. biggest issue I've had so far was you wanted to put the sword fight. After the jailbreak, which kind of didn't make sense, but yeah, yeah, he stood his ground. He said, "Okay, no sword fight." Says, "Okay, okay, let's compromise." So it was basically sword fight will be at the end. Sort of thing. It was a it was a compromise. So uh, if I don't like an idea and he does, and he feels strongly about it like that, then we just fill out the compromise. But otherwise, we haven't had any horrible things, and I think it's turned out good. From the ashes, is getting <clears throat> oh some good positive feedback. Um, 
Um, besides the, where's episode nine of Rift? Where's episode the, the thirteen? Where, 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 yeah, I saw one of those comments. I was like, <laughs> what? that's me. That's every time, that's me. <laughs> oh, is that you? <laughs> where's episode thirteen? It's a yep. meme at this point. So like, okay, I give you this because I'm working on this. But they're like, oh, I just want that right now, and I'm like, well, I can't do give you that right Man, now. Let me the give rolling, you this. The Rolling Stone said, <laughs> maybe in the near future. I don't know. You can't always get what you want. Oh, god damn. Mm. <sighs> that yo. That's basically our writing process. Uh, digital. Um, same with me. Um, I kind of co-write with um, Gamma, who voices Blue, and. Autumn, who voices Autumn, and we kind of like work together. Like I come with the initial plot, and then they kind of like help me a bit grammar wise, or just like make it, you know, more funnier kind of thing. But um, originally, season two, we did have like, you know, plots and uh, other ideas. Season two of Fighting Weasels were uh, completely different to what it was now. Um, it, it had like new characters and um, new places, but what we decided to do instead was uh, split off. So basically, Gamma and uh, Autumn work on um, a new Mission Number series called uh, Guardians, which um, is still working right now, but uh, we're just kind of doing our own time because everyone's just busy at the moment. That's why it's taking so long. But so far, it's, like I say, 70% done. Um, and then I work on uh, Fighting Weasel Season 2. And when the... You can tell, like, how the script was uh, a bit different like uh, it's more you could tell like who written it and who um who, who, which different part like who co-created it but with um the future ones we'll, we'll be back together now so it'll be back to kind of like normal i do help with um guardians kind of a uh, script writing, like for the newer parts i didn't do it for the in the beginning but now i'm kind of like helping them with the editing and now with the script writing so i'll be pretty much back to no we'll just be working on two Shimmers at once, so I'll be really, really busy. But um, three, yeah. But um, for when it comes to like script writing, it is quite difficult to, especially if it's a comedy one, because uh, it's much more harder than to do a serious one. So, like, <laughs> yeah. to make people make people laugh, because um, you know, if it's a flat joke, then it just fails the whole like. Yeah, s- I have aspect. issues with that. I'm like, is this funny? Because I laugh at a lot of stuff. I'm like, is this really funny? I'm like, uh. Yeah. Then when you hear I the line say, a thousand times editing, you're like, I don't know if this is funny anymore. It's lost all meaning. It's lost all meaning to me. That's how comedians <laughs> feel all the time. I feel like when they say jokes, it's all like, well, I don't know if it's funny, but you know, they laugh. So I think like when you hear the joke so many times, it's not funny to you, and you're like, yeah. oh, it's not funny anymore. Exactly. But when some people hear it, it's like, wow. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Like, oh, okay, yeah. So, you become immune. Yeah. You become immune. I will say joke. that it's much yeah. easier to write a serious machine because it's all like, yeah. okay. This yeah, is it's really, dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> it's really difficult to like keep your characters how they are. It's like, because I really fear like I'm gonna turn my characters into like a one-sided character. Like, um, a per- perfect example is like Ned Flanders from The Simpsons. Like in the beginning, he was like this like uh, uptake father who's religious and like um, kind of like being cool and everything. But now he's just like this one-sided religious nut. <laughs> And it just ruined him. But I don't want, yeah. like, Blue, for example, just to be this alcoholic warlock. It's like, I just want to do <laughs> something else with him. So that made me laugh. That's, that's really time. difficult. That, that made me laugh when I first saw that he was yeah. drunk. And he's talking to his ghost. And he's like, hey, I love you. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, good night, Guardian. He's like, uh, what? The fuck funny you? thing is, uh, Gamma was, like, actually tired. Um, he didn't get enough sleep, so like that was the perfect time for him to get drunk. <laughs> but, you know what's drunk, funny was... <laughs> is that He's Brian? Like, uh, uh, can I go to bed now? No. <laughs> do your lines. You know what's funny is that Brian has to have some liquor in him to do his lines because he gets shy. So most of the time, Brian is actually kind of tipsy when he's doing Brian. It's so funny, and like <laughs> otherwise he can't do it. Um, but to answer the question for myself, the script writing, um, since I am the only script writer in Team Titan, um, the only issues I run into is like, how am I getting from point A to B? Because how I like to write scripts, even with serious stuff, is like plot points, and then I go and how do I get there? So I know the next three seasons, I know how they're going to go. I know exactly the points I want to hit, and now it's like, well, how do I get to those points? 
Um, so that's like the issue sometimes I run into where I'm like, okay, I want to do this, but how do I get there? Does this make sense? Um, I will say that character arcs and like making sure each character have their own unique kind of voice. I mean, the voice actors take care of that part, yeah. but you know, to make them seem like an actual person, person. instead of just a caricature or something like that, yeah. that is difficult. Like, how am I supposed to make sure that Dion and Gareth aren't the same person? Or, yeah. or, uh, Erebon? Yeah, Gemini. Like, how is Gemini different from this ghost? Or how is this ghost different from this ghost? So that's, that's difficult. I like to have them either give them a sort of... Archetype? Yeah, archetype, yes. Yeah. I do the same thing. About. Like, in Team Titan, it's like... Uh, like Falcon is the tryhard, Brun is the average player, and then Raven is the person that takes the shit too seriously. And then like in Team Merc, Boss is the asshole, Slaker, he's a redneck, I don't know how to describe him, and then Box and Waron. Like, yeah. But like really, and the funny thing is that the like, if you look at Team Mercenary and Team Titan, they are the same almost. Like Raven and, um, Raven and Boss are basically like the leaders of their teams, they're like really serious about a lot of things. And then Hawk or Falcon and Slaker are like their foil. They're they're both almost the same. And then Buck and Brun are kind of like the morons of the group. But they're they're different though enough that they're not the same. It's not like the both teams are exactly the same. So I like that. Mm. Alright, let's see. Uh, so we kind of talked about this earlier. Just a new question. Uh, what were some plot and character ideas that you had to scrap? Like for me, um, I did say earlier on, but um, season two of Fire Team Weasel was like uh, it was supposed to be different, but we kind of not scrapped it, but moved to side to another series called Guardians, which is uh, coming very soon. But there was one um, idea it back in um, episode two. Up, oh, he's gonna have a call. <laughs> so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> But um, back in um, episode two of season one, where um, Blue and Scully talked to Fail, originally, uh, Fail was uh, hosting a party on the other side for um, Blue's miss- uh, pretty much thinking he's dead. And then like, <laughs> oh, I'm back. And he's like, oh, shit. It's like, um, we're just hosting this party for blah, blah, blah. I was like, are you hosting because I'm dead? Maybe. And you hear, you hear like K6 in the background, like, you know, with a keg or something. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, I think then Gamma was in disagreement with that and uh, kind of made more, like, made more of a serious character. So mm-hmm. that's what we might kind of went for instead. I might bring that idea in, though. I like uh, an idea, like, f- someone thinks he's dead and holds a party because they hate him so much. But <laughs> party? I don't know where. Never part of my That'd funeral. <laughs> Um, I had a scrap an idea with uh Vespia and Osiris. They're supposed to have a much more interconnected kind of storyline, story arc. You know how okay, they're both warlocks. They both have a sense of tension, or whatever. I had I managed to sneak one in, but like they were supposed to know each other a lot better than how much in, better in, in story. Not that much better, but. Uh, student master relationship. It was supposed to be a lot more conflicted, but the problem was I lost my original Osiris voice actor, and so I just just cut it, that out completely, and just had it that one scene in the last episode. But you know, that's one of the only things that I could say that I had to um cut, at least from the at least in Rift. Um, more, I think we had to cut something from the ashes. Um, I don't remember anything big in From the Ashes. I do. I was going to have a character that's coming in, like, Season 2 when they go to Titan. I was going to have that character earlier, like, to help Gemini, but we got that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but with uh, From the Ashes, I don't think there's anything super big. Yeah, for me, um, I don't think I really scrapped anything super major. I know that for Season 2, the original enemies that they are... Uh, so basically, and, and this is like a kind of a spoiler for episode 7, if it's not out by the time this podcast comes out, um, basically in season 2 they go to Venus because that's where Falcon's mission takes them. And originally they were going to fight a certain enemy. And then after talking to Digital, we realized that that enemy is too similar to his wraiths in Fireteam Weasel. So we actually end up creating a brand new enemy for them to fight. And actually I think is a better idea than what I had. 
Um, so it was, can't say it was scrap because we're still doing it. It's just the enemies are not what I had wanted to do initially. I say more improved, I say. Yeah, they're they're more. Uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's different and it's a, a new idea. So it's not something that's already been done, which is cool. But it's, uh, I can't think of anything super serious that got scrapped. Um, no, not really. Yeah. In the, in the clear. <laughs> I mean, I'm the only one that writes the show, but I can't think of anything that I wrote, and I was really vehemently, like, I read it, I was like, ah. <laughs> like, there's stuff I've trimmed down that was too long, but besides nothing, like, major that would have affected the plot in any way like that. Mm. Um, next question is, what was the inspiration behind the villains you created? Did you shape them around the storyline, or was the storyline shaped around them? Hmm. For me, I can answer um, that, because I don't have villains in Team yeah. Titan right now, so no. Uh, or yes, I'm whichever. Saying, well, I'd say, um, I'd say boss is more like the villain so far. He was a... Uh, boss was basically there to provide conflict to Team Titan. Um, he's mm. really not like a super antagonist, but I guess for that story... That little arc he was, but um, I have an antagonist for Team Titan. It's not a guardian character. It's a it's one of the bosses from a raid. But besides that, I can't really say. Well, hmm. I will say that one of the good guys is going to be bad in the next season. So, but it's not their fault. So that's very ambiguous. But yeah. Um, and then <laughs> he left. Um, we'll see what you've done now, spoilers, and he's just gone. <laughs> yeah. What happens? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm just being vague about it. Um, hmm. I can't really think of any villains. I don't have any real villains planned until D2, really. Yeah. Like, um, with me, like, Fail in Season 1 was uh, kind of really... Um, he was shaped around the actual progression of Destiny 1, because um, originally for... The first couple of episodes, we kind of just made them on the go, uh, not realizing that what, what's going to happen at the end. Like, so we kind of brought in when the Rise of Iron was released. We kind of, you know, we, we did a raid. Like, oh wow, this is cool. Let's add this in. Now this in, and we kind of worked that like, Fail was working on this secret project. We didn't, we didn't even know at the time until much later on. Yeah. And then obviously with season two, with um, John, I kind of worked uh, the story around him instead gotcha. so it was kind of a bit opposite so it was much more easier because the dreadnought on it was around for quite some time and it was much easier to um just kind of write the story around it and it was much easier basically season one was just like a, a fluke i was like <laughs> about more is there if any is there an antagonist and in... yeah there's there is a okay. couple of them oh, okay cool with our when I came up with the base idea for From the Ashes, it was just going to be, there wasn't going to be any, like, big bad guy. But early on when writing, we figured that, hey, we're going to need a big bad guy to help push the story forward. So we've got Bishop, who is a bandit hellbent on killing guardians. That's pretty cool. And or he, he was only going to be okay for a season, so we s spun more and more villains that are all related in a way that you guys will see in the future. So, for, so we've got a good amount. So of was the and... the story? Was it like did you write the villain first and then write the story around the villain, or was like the story like um, shaped who the villain was as you kept writing, or both? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. He winged it. Both. Like there, he had yeah, tempest kind of to hold winged. his hand, so he was good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving him. So, yeah, uh, I'd say Osiris is uh, the other villain as well for season one. Yeah. Cause... Oh. Even though, unfortunately, like we had no idea who uh, who Osiris was until um, much later in D two, he was like, "Oh, he was actually the good guy all along," but they kind of like Perhaps. screwed up their chronological rift in this, so you have to change it right at the end. But luckily, you know, right at the end, you guys thought that Osiris looking at this like a simulation of the entire like series was like kind of kind of. Uh, Pleasing the, you know, real Destiny fans, like, you know, it's like, it's like, oh, okay, you know, at least the law is still intact. You know, this happened, yeah. this happened without screwing it up. Yeah. So that's good. I do have a bit more to add. Bishop, even though he's kind of created on the go, he's more fleshed out than the rest of the villains so far because he's the only one right now. The rest of them yeah. will come later on. And they were, the rest of them are kind of created on the go. 
Like our big big bad guy was like, hey, we should have a big big bad guy. And that yeah. was that. And we named him and boom, that was done. So Yeah. Everyone else, like all the other villains, even though they were created to like just in spur of the moment, they will get fleshed out farther along. Yeah. Yeah, see the thing is like for for boss, I don't see him as like I mean he is an antagonist because he's opposing the protagonist, but he's not like a villain. He's just doing what he needs to do to get a, get ahead, and um, even though he would have killed Team Titan if he was able to, if they hadn't made that area crucible zone, he did mention that. So, but uh, to be honest, this arc is probably the most antagonistic he's going to be, because I have plans for him to inadvertently help Team Titan in the future, so he won't really... He might just be a thorn in their side, but he's not the main threat um, that they're facing. That'll, that'll, there'll be, and even in season two, what I have planned, there is no, there's no specific villain. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's hard. I don't want to spoil shit. Um, there will be antagonists, but I wouldn't call them like villains because they don't, I don't know. Maybe now that we have this new idea, maybe there will be like a lead villain for that group, that group that they have to fight. I don't know. So mm -hmm. that, that question is unanswered right now, but, uh, Mm -hmm. What I do have planned, I'm excited for, and uh, we'll, the the thing that I want to do once I get to D2, which by the way will be season four of Team Titan, uh, I do have a main villain planned, and it's it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> I'm really yeah. excited to do it. <laughs> like I think it's gonna be awesome. Uh, no one's gonna expect it, and uh, it's gonna be uh, he's gonna be just a complete horrible person, and just to everyone, and just be the worst kind of thing you could imagine um so i'm really excited to to do that but uh mm -hmm. speaking of d2 uh we have two more questions uh for the transition into destiny 2 do you think it will speed up the creative process or slow it down um like i don't think uh, it depends if like um um what like comes forth because you know you never know like the well, the way to put your guns down in D2 is to like use the uh, Bungie app but right now it's even like on for maintenance for like four days and hopefully they don't patch it and then obviously we're screwed uh, yeah right but um but so far um the reason I haven't done anything D2 yet is because I'm um, trying to get all the armor pieces together to see because uh, they just keep it's because it's still new yeah and like even though like there's some in September that the uh, you never know, like, any armor pieces that look much better than what we've been trying to grind for for the past months. So, Rip. we got, because we got, got stuff in mind, but, um, I don't, I think it'll just keep the same one once we actually get everything done. Because now it's private matches now, so we can actually finally get on, to, yeah. back on track, basically. But we just have to wait for, like, maybe a couple of months. Yeah, um, I don't think D2 will slow it down. I think it might speed it up a bit. Um, the emote wheel is going to be a great just tool yeah. for us to use and being able to be more expressive in conversations instead of just having people like doing this the whole time um, yeah, or nodding their heads or whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, right now it seems like D2 is morphing into like D1 anyway, so the way they're doing it, so I don't see it would slow it down at all. Um, I don't yeah. get to D2 for three, two more seasons, so for me it's like... By the time I get into D2, probably all the expansions will be out, and I will get I can get whatever armor. Of course, freaking Raven's armor is an escalation protocol, so I have to like grind for that, just for anticipation for D2. And plus, you guys are have asked me to get armor together, because if you do stuff in D2 and you want Team Titan characters, we need to have something yeah. that looks like them to give you guys. So I'm um, mm, trying yeah. to figure that out. And their last question... Uh, are there any plans to expand the Destiny Machinimatic universe with any other series from any other people? Um, so far, no. Um, I don't <laughs> think that's so. That's the short answer. I think there was one, like, um, one did approach me, but I'm not sure if they still do Destiny Machinima anymore. Yeah. But basically, see, um, they call Garden Gnomes, and yeah. um. They work on a, a machine works series called the uh, Fire Team. Um, I can't remember what it's called, like something with the side of bacon. But they made two episodes so far. But I'm not sure if they're going to carry on. But um, 
but they did one of the guys of the uh, approached me like oh it could be being this you know the crossover thing i was like yeah sure you know just hit up uh zeon at the moment but uh so far I don't, I'm, I'm not even sure i might have to get them again but so yeah. far but so far no one else yet yeah my my main thing is like i don't want to add anyone to the to dmu that's not committed to their show um, I say that, and I had a seven-month delay between five and six, but that was, like, out of my control, which that's because other people couldn't keep their commitments. Um, I was on board, but I people just screwed episode six over so hard. Um, yeah. So there's no one else that I can think of now. I mean, I didn't even, real, I didn't even think that uh, we were going to have uh, From the Ashes in it. I mean, I, I, I knew it was part of Tempest Night's thing, but so that, I mean, that's already one that I wasn't aware of, but... Um, I also don't think we need to get super big. That just makes everything more complicated. I think, if anything, we have four shows right now in the DMU. If we add one more, that would be okay. Yeah. But, I mean, I think... I mean, there's a lot of content between the four shows already, as it is. I mean... Yeah. Uh, I mean I'm mean, i not even sure that if uh, Guardians is going to be part of the DMU as well. Yeah. If but anything, that would probably be my suggestion, is that Guardians would be part of it. There's really no yeah. other main... Destiny Machinima is out there. Um, I mean, me and, and Digital Curse are, what, two and three under P Destiny Police? Destiny Cops? Um, and then yeah. after that, everyone is just really... Uh, even Rift is uh, pretty low on views. And then after that, it just falls dramatically. Speaking of which... Um, <laughs> all right, everyone, stop talking shit. He's back. <laughs> I hate all y'all. I, <laughs> I had to... Um... It, it, that, it was a, it was a girl. Anyways, it was, it was, you know, it was a girl. Really you got a girl. It was a girl. It was a girl. All right, what were y'all speaking about? Uh, we were just uh, well, we kind of answered the question for you. Um, right now we were talking about plans to expand. This is the last question, I think. Yeah, it is. Uh, any plans to expand the DMU with other machinimas? Uh, my answer was basically no. <laughs> uh, I said, do I think we have enough content as it is? And if anything, Guardians yeah, would probably be. Phase 2. <laughs> Guardians would probably be my go-to, because there's really no other machinima besides us. Everything else kind of drops off, you know, unseen. Um, and other stuff I have watched that has low views, I wasn't a super big fan of. Um, not, that it was, not that there wasn't hard work put into it, but I just didn't see it fitting in. Um, and I think, like I said, we have four shows right now. Guardians would be a good fifth one, and then I think that would probably be enough for sure. Yeah. It's like I like um, there was another uh, Destiny Mission Mode channel called Killed by the Architects. They were like a pretty cool. Uh, oh yeah, I remember that. Mission, but they had like two episodes of like their series. Of, uh, I think it was like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Destiny something. Yeah, Galaxy I remember that. Yeah, Killed by the that's, Architects. And now that channel's dead. Ever yeah. since Destiny Two came out. But uh, oh no, but th there's only like two possibles, which is Fighting Figures Breakfast with Side of Bacon. Which I'm, <laughs> if there's a third episode, maybe I can maybe I can talk to them. But yeah. uh, and then obviously with uh, Gammon and or Autumn's series with Guardians, but God, try trying to help them get on upload it first. I, I actually, now that it. you guys meant you mentioned, um, I have a person on my on Team Titan. Uh, he's doing. Um, we have Kinder Guardians in Destiny in uh, Episode Seven, and he's doing one of them, <clears throat> and. Uh, He's actually writing a machinima as well, and I don't know if he'll be part of it or not, or if his ma just his main character will appear randomly, because his character is like a nomad hunter, so it's it's kind of like maybe he can just randomly appear in other shows. But um, he's extremely funny, uh, naturally quick-witted, and I'm really excited to see his script. And I've talked to him a lot, and uh, he actually kind of like got me emotional the other day because he wrote me like this long thing on Facebook about how I inspired him and I'm like what the fuck are you talking about like what like he's like and he just explained himself and I was like that's makes me feel really good like that's why I do this like I if you guys have seen anything else on the channel like I just love creating stuff like props and costumes and the figures and everything and this show I love writing and it's like if any of that at all inspired somebody to like pick up a pen or start writing or start editing or start making a prop or something like that. I'm like, I feel great about that. Like, cause so many people on YouTube inspired me to do all that stuff. You know, like, like I said, I started doing team Titan because of fire team weasel. Like originally I was going to do a star Wars machinima in old Republic. 
and then I saw Fireteam Weasel, and I've been playing D1 since the beta, and I was like, you know what, I can do this, and then I did it, and then me and him became friends now, and now I love him, he's my, one of my good friends. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Come here! Come here, you know, you know the only one that said Come that here! Give me a hug! That's, that's how I big guess. I am, that's, yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's you. This is um, my I host. got a laptop, so I can't exactly. <laughs> I'm a crusher. <laughs> thing is, I mean, I'm not opposed to adding people in. The thing is, they will have to follow what we have set up. Yeah, we can't just have. Yeah, that, that would be a major problem that I can see. It's like, okay, if you wanna, if you want to continue it on after we have our ever crossover Infinity War event, <laughs> I, I am more than happy to be like, okay, you can have this character. Don't ruin my character. Yeah. Don't just have him do whatever, whatever. It has to stay in line. Yeah. Otherwise, I, which is why I, I'm very stingy about about who we allow into. I don't want like us to put someone in and then they die off and then it just makes us look stupid. I don't want that for sure. Um, I want this to I, be I dedication. Yeah. I had like one person um come up to me like, oh, I would like to have my character to fight Team Weasel. I'm gonna plan to make it. I'm just like. Please don't do that. Please, I didn't. I'm not asking. I'm forcing you to not do it because I just know this is like a 12 year old kid as well. So I'm just like, it's fine <laughs> liking the series and making your OC characters, but please don't actually make it canon because it's yeah. not. <laughs> I mean, I would love to have Destiny cops like um, yeah be part of the canon as well, but one they kind of like just seem whatever they want. It's, it. I always find Destiny cops to be like a as a something trip? you watch on TV. <laughs> So what That's I'm going to do, I'm going to make a reference to Destiny Cops. It's like a TV show, because it is <laughs> like a Destiny show. show in the Destiny universe. Because it, it, it's the way it's portrayed, yeah. especially at the end of season two of Destiny Cops. It, it's just it's, it's it's really like a it's made all set or anything in the Destiny universe. When it's all over, it's like cut. It's just like you see Dragon Winters, just like all oh, right. Go back to tower now. <laughs> <That's actually cool. laughs> the actors. Oh, wow. yeah. that actually is funny. That's a good hang. Uh, it was Gemini's favorite TV show. Gemini's favorite TV show. <laughs> I actually I'm dislike planning. Destiny Cop, so yeah. I don't I, dislike it. <laughs> I, uh, I, actually, I just I don't. Like I don't find just, it funny. I rather do their own thing. I like the um, some things they do. It's quite funny, but majority of the time is um, I don't like. I didn't like this thing in. Like one because I know like making the Broadway kind of thing is quite difficult, but I just don't like Broadway stuff like that in general. And I don't really like it's just really cringy for me to watch it. I did like it. I got you. That was, that was is this not it's not my type of like humor? It. I like their um music videos they do, like there's something weird in Venus. Oh and yeah. Stuff like that. <laughs> those that's are pretty really, those are pretty entertaining. That that's on their YouTube channel. Yep. What's the YouTube? Um Husky, Husky Raid. Raid. We don't need we no, don't no, need no, to no. we don't need to plug them. We need the views. Not they get a hundred thousand views. We don't. They need to plug us. <laughs> you know. They need to recognize us. You know. But um. Them, but well, we got no. to the end of all the questions. Um, we'll be doing this again. Uh, this this should be on Tempest Knight's channel once I edit it because we're rotating the podcast. Uh, next time it'll be on my channel again. So back to home base, and um. I guess you know we'll plug everyone. Plug your stuff real quick, and uh, we're gonna sign off. So, did you want to plug anything? Or yeah, um, you know, keep supporting us. Uh, subscribe to our channels. Like, press that notification bell. There's also a Discord link in the description if you want to like talk to us. You know, uh, maybe you want to join us on the Xbox or PlayStation Four. PlayStation Four, and <laughs> <laughs> to help us with uh, our Machinima series. And, um, you know, do make this community, like, you know, much bigger. Because it's quite small right now, but hopefully because of Destiny 2's that reputation right now, yeah. we only really hope it's going to increase now with all this new patches and DLC coming out. Tempest? That's, uh, my, that's my plug in. Subscribe, subscribe to these guys here. They're great content creators. Um, subscribe to Tempest 916, you know. Who's that? Plug yourself. And <laughs> join that Discord. You'll have fun. It's... It's memified. It's the greatest. She's in here. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Subscribe for the cat. <laughs> yeah, like for the cat. Like for the cat. <laughs> Alright, you guys know, um, subscribe to Xeon Remnants to see future episodes of Team Titan. Uh, 
our season finale is coming up. Uh, we're going to end season one with episode nine, which comes out in July around the Guardian Con time. And if you're going to Guardian Con, I will be there Friday and Saturday. Friday, I will be rocking a Team Titan shirt. Uh, with props, and you guys can come by, take pictures. Um, I'll have cards to give to everyone. If you guys um, want to get in touch with me to make for me to make you something, let me know. It'll be on the card, and um, I'll be tweeting pictures of everybody and uh, doing all that. On Saturday at Guardian Con, I will be in full Titan armor, and uh, I will uh, be walking around taking pictures with people and putting smiles on everyone's faces, which is one of my favorite things to go when I do these events. And um, just if you guys. Besides Team Titan, if you want to see any proper custom-related stuff, check out my channel. Subscribe to uh, Tempest and Digital Curse for their machinimas. And uh, get ready for some really cool crossover shit and some awesome storytelling in the months to come between uh, all the shows that are going to be involved in the DMU. Um, until then, thanks you guys for watching, tuning into this podcast. And as always, Zixion! Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're not doing that. <laughs> Fuck him.